leaking pipes, leaking cash, and now parasites leaking into the water supply. Can anyone fix the water industry? Water companies were passed into the private sector debt-free. But with the public now revolting against the tide of effluent in our rivers and seas, will they now have to pick up the bill? Good evening. Water should be a simple business. Everyone needs to buy it. The companies that provide it all have regional monopolies. The key raw material is free. It should be the easiest buck around. But between mismanagement and misregulation, something has gone badly wrong, as events this week have shown. Ben is here. Bad week. It has been a bad week, Faisal, for the water industry. Southwest Water, which serves Devon, has been apologising today for the fact that a parasite has entered the local water network and made hundreds of people in the town of Brixham ill. And this has really been seen, understandably, as a failure of the first duty of a water company, which is to deliver water which is safe to drink. And it comes a few days after the BBC reported that uh, United Utilities had released millions of litres of raw sewage into Lake Windermere in the Lake District back in February. And the context for both of these stories, Faisal, is claims of chronic underinvestment by water companies which had been privatised in maintaining their networks, which critics say is responsible for these kind of pollution events happening. It also comes, of course, in the context of a bigger debate about whether privatisation of water in England has fundamentally failed and is behind, partially at least, some of these problems. That was put to the deputy chief executive of the association group Water UK this week in a parliamentary hearing. When I speak to my colleagues in France or Germany, you know, Germany has 66,000 overflows which are broadly unmonitored. Um, when I speak to my French mm. colleagues, they cannot tell me how many overflows they've got. So. I, I don't want us to think this is a uniquely English problem because it, it just isn't. Um, I take the point that, that it's an unusual ownership model. Most countries do not uh, have the system that we do. But I think that's, that's a separate issue to the question of um, environmental performance. So, Faisal, I think many analysts would agree that privatisation doesn't necessarily mean that you have problems with pollution. But what critics say is that they look at all the dividends which have left the privatised English water system since 1989, £72 billion, pounds, and they say that surely can't have helped when it comes to the infrastructure deficit spending. Well, thanks, Ben. We'll hear more from you in a moment. Uh, but I'm joined now by the Conservative MP, Anthony Magnall, whose Totnes constituency includes Brixham, and in the studio here by Laura Reneka uh, of Henley Mermaids, a group of women who came together through their love of open water swimming and who campaigned for clean waterways. Laura, thanks for joining us here. Just explain to us how things have changed over the past few years in terms of your... Uh, Open water swimming. We've seen a massive uh, decline in the water quality in the Thames where we swim. Um, it's gone from clean and clear to having all the plant life having a sewage scum on it. It's very murky, very brown. So visible. Absolutely. Visible, visible. But, yeah. but that would be because sewage spills went up by 105% last year. 3.6 million hours of sewage dumped into the Thames. But also, the chemicals are the biggest problem. They don't have... No inland waterways have a way of cleaning off the chemicals. 350,000 regulated chemicals go into our waterways through some form. And, and this is a massive problem. And have you had to change the way that you kind of interact with Yes, water? I've been very poorly four times. Um, and what we do now is we check the sewage map before we swim and so that we are informed about where is best to swim and where isn't and sometimes we have to go and swim in a lake that's clean or the swimming pool. Okay well let's bring in Anthony Magnall over in Totnes. Thanks for joining us uh, Anthony. What's the situation in Brixham uh, tonight? It's, it's pretty serious in terms of the number of people who've been impacted. It's incredibly serious and it's utterly contemptible how South West Water has behaved. I mean this week started out with residents raising their 
concerns around the water that they were drinking from a taste point of view. And then a number of people stepped forward to, to reveal that they were quite seriously ill, some of which have, uh, or one of which has recently had to go to hospital. Uh, Southwest Water then denied that this was anything to do with them, only for them to then say 24 hours later that it was to do with them because of what was in the water. I mean, it's been an utterly disastrous week for the water companies. And this is, uh, you know, this has got to be addressed. And I think you're calling for an inquiry, aren't you? But it, it seems to be something to do maybe with the farm runoff. That's the, that's the I, suspect here, I, isn't it? Not, no, certainly not. Not as far as I'm concerned. I don't know that it's a farm runoff. Run it is an air vent that is supposedly being cracked or, or broken that has perhaps let a contaminated source into the, into the water source. That's what's led to it. We don't know how that's come about. We're obviously waiting to hear how it comes about. Um, yes, I'm calling for inquiry, but all politicians call for inquiries. That's not good enough. The people of Brixham are rightly very, very angry, and they are let down, and they have this huge reservation, as we've just heard from your uh, fellow panel, fellow guest tonight, about our water network and, and even our drinking water, and that is a totally unacceptable state. Now, I mean, you've, you've defended privatisation before, fairly recently. Is it, is it a system problem rather than just a specific problem with an air vent in your constituency? Is it privatisation uh, I mean, the problem? Uh, so, I mean, on this issue, I just don't know because I don't know what's caused that break in the system. I do make this point around privatisation is that if you, if you or nationalisation, if you go to a nationalised model, you're essentially putting all the costs back onto the taxpayer. Now, I think you have to have proper regulation to get us into this place where water companies are doing what they should be doing, which is upgrading our system, doing it in record time and not passing the costs on to the consumer. And unfortunately, that's what they're doing at the moment. So we need to make sure off what's got the teeth to be able to do the things it needs to do. We need to be able to make sure that the Environment Act that we passed a few years ago actually implements those policies of stopping dividend payments, bonus payments, mm -hmm. revoking licenses, sending executives to jail if they don't get these things right. Those measures are there. We have to use them. But, I'm, you know, tonight I'm sitting three, four miles outside of Brixham, concerned about a town that doesn't have access to water. Yeah. Well, let me bring Laura back in. I mean, one of the solutions that we're hearing about is essentially there's not enough money in the system and that bills will have to go up. In order to provide the cleanliness of the areas that you've just t you know, told us about so vividly, do you accept that everyone's going to have to pay higher bills? Well, basically, water is cheap. I mean, I pay £36 a month for my water. Um, the, I think the point is, is that water is a shared resource and every living thing on the planet has to have water to survive. It shouldn't be owned by foreign investors and run by mismanaged um, uh, water companies. It should be run by a, a well-managed group of people who understand what's happening. It, they've made it complicated in order to make money, and that's okay. the point. But, but you, I did detect that maybe you did accept that paying a little bit more for the water I might... I think we do need to ...as pay individuals. Oh, I do think we... But we have already paid. That is part of the problem. We have already paid, and that money has been spent. Well, let me put that back to Anthony Magnell. I mean, you're the politician here. I know you're representing your constituency today, but also you represent a party that's been in power for 14 years that maybe could have done, done more... Can, can you be honest with the public and say, actually, to deal with these problems, you're going to have to pay more, substantially more, potentially, for your water bill? I mean, I think the, the interesting point about privatisation is that it's led to huge investment into the network. Yes, dividends have been paid out and bonuses have been paid out. And actually, I agree entirely with Laura, the mismanagement is staggering. Of course it is. This is why we're seeing these problems with overpaid executives across yeah. the country yeah. who are being performance-linked performance pay. For not, performance a, not a single poor. reservoir has been built in, in privatisation. Not a single yeah. reservoir. And, I mean, and they've it, paid it, more it, in dividends than they've put back into the system, into the infrastructure. This is, exactly, this is exactly the point that I'm making, which is that when you look at the management, the management is extremely poor. What we have to do is make sure that the regulator is working. We have to make sure that that investment of 100 billion that the uh, world water companies have proposed between 25 and 2030 is expedited and delivered, and people can see the very realistic changes that are needed within our water. And network. bills, just, can I just get, ask you on bills quickly, Anthony? We've got to wrap up, but do you accept um, that bills are going to go up? I mean, I do think water is cheap. I think we're going to have to have that conversation. But at the moment, while the water network is, is so poorly orchestrated, I don't think that cost should be passed back onto the British public. 
let's leave that there for now. Thank you very much, Anthony Magnol, and thank you very much, Laura Renica. Thank you very much. Ben is back with us because it's actually quite, it's been not been a great week over the past few days, but the coming week could be quite critical. Next week is really important. The off what the um, water regulator is going to decide how much those water companies are going to be allowed to invest and consequently how much they're going to be allowed to charge us for the water over the next five years. We expect a decision on the 12th of June, but it may we may get that a bit earlier, actually, uh, maybe as soon as next week. Um, the implications for Thames Water, you know, this giant southeast uh, water company, which has been in real financial difficulties, are Responsible super... for Laura's River. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Super important consequences of this meeting uh, next week for that company, because if Thames Water doesn't see its own financial plans accepted by the regulator and its investors effectively walk away, that's how it could end up in a sort of temporary nationalisation, a special administration regime. Now, it's important to note that Thames is not the only water company in England and Wales which has financial stress. I think we can look at a chart here which shows that Thames Water there, 77% debt as a share of its total assets. But look, a lot of other companies also have high debt. That was, that was zero uh, nationalisation. That's right. Nationalization, sorry. And you can see three other ones that have been identified by the water regulator as to watch there um, as well. SCS Water, Southern Water and South East Water. But there's some really important other contexts as well, Faisal, because Ofwat has indicated its target for maximum debt levels for the water companies will be only will go down to that yellow dotted line, just 55 percent. So they're all above that at the moment. Getting back down to that will be financially painful. Mm -hmm. And this is important because some fear that if Thames does go into special administration, that could create a financial contagion effect that could affect other investors in other water companies in a similar way. And you could get the problem spreading. It's not in the it's in the interest of investors, of course, to paint that dire picture so they get their plans accepted. But I think it is fair to say that the risk of financial problems for um, the water company as a whole, for the sector as a whole, is still increasing. Well, we'll keep an eye on that next week. Thanks very much, Ben, for that.